Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made this card. I've used the um, our rolls of metallic, um, let me see what we're calling it, um, metallic metallic splitter tape and it's one of the products that's available as um, a free item during celebration celebration is where if you place a qualifying order of 20, 45 pounds um, or more then you choose a free product from the celebration catalogue and this is one of the options um, the thing is all of these rolls are half an inch wide and on my card I've got narrower um, on the gold ones they're the ones I've been playing about with today and I want to show you the easy way of making this tape more narrow um, obviously you could just pull it open and cut down it and fight and hope you've got it straight and all sorts but I have a nice easy way of doing it so to start off with I'll tell you the card pieces that you're going to need the card base is Whisper White and that is eight and a quarter inches by five and three quarter inches scored and folded at four and one eighth and that's 21 centimetres by 14.5 centimetres scored and folded at 10.5 and then a piece of our gold foil which is four inches by five and five eighths inches or 10.25 by 14.25 centimetres then a piece of Whisper White which measures 3 and 7 eighths by 5 and a half inches which is 10 by 14 centimetres. For the sentiment you need a piece of Whisper White which is 3 and a quarter inches by 1 and 5 eighths inches which is 8.25 by 4 inches, no 8.25 by 4 centimetres and a gold foil layer which measures three and three eighths by one and three quarter inches which is 8.5 by 4.25 centimeters. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I make my tape more narrow. So what I do is I get a piece of darker paper as my background for me to work on. Let me just move that out of the way. And you will need something like this. This is the uh, some board that comes at the back of our designer series paper. Uh, when you receive it, it's 12 by 12 size, but obviously I've been using it, playing about with it today, so mine's very narrow now, it's about four inches, I suppose. So the first thing you need to do is take whichever tape you want to make narrow, slim down and this will work with ordinary uh, washi tape as well. I mean we call it glitter tape uh, but it is um, more or less the same as washi tape it's just that it's a lot thicker because it's got the glitter on it. In fact I'm going to work from this side. What you need to do, I'm going to bring it down to me as well, is you need to stick this along here but you need it as straight as possible. So the way you do it is adhere this down onto your white cardstock and just leave a tiny, tiny gap between the tape and the top of the white card. I don't know if that's a 1 32nd of an inch or 1 64th of an inch. All I know is it's very tiny and you just need to make sure that you've got that gap all the way down. Now you could do this by lining up the top of your tape with the top of your cardstock, but by the time you finish you've got to turn it over and make sure you're still in, in the right place, whereas this you know as soon as you've gone wrong, if you go wrong. All right, so cut that off. Now I don't need that. Now I'm going to bring my 
uh, cutter in. Now, unfortunately, I can't zoom my camera so that you can see all of this at the same time. So what I'm going to do is, with this half on, half off my desk, I'm going to demonstrate what I'm going to do. But when I'm ready to do it, I'm going to actually put it forward so that it is safe on my desk before I try cutting with it. Okay, so this measures four inches wide and that's nice and straight all the way down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this along to just a bit short of three and three quarters and then I'm going to cut it. And hopefully what's going to happen is I'm going to finish up with one piece that's wider than the other because that piece, that top end, is starting further away from the edge. So that should cause, create the difference between the widths. So let me move this out of the way. I'll line it up just a tad short of three and three quarters. Now I don't think this would work with a trimmer, um, there we go, I've got two different widths there now, that's what I wanted. Okay, now to work with this I'm also going to cut that piece off. Okay, so I've got two pieces like this now. So I'm going to take my top layer. I've got my gold, I have my white and my silver. Now I'm going to start off using this little bit of leftover. And what I need to do is line up this corner of my cardstock into the corner of one of the squares. Make sure that the cardstock is straight here and here and then I'm going to line the edge of my tape, the top edge there, with that point on the cardstock and I'm going to make sure it comes from that corner down to that corner to that one and the same up there. And then I know that all my lines will be, um, can I say diagonally straight? Um, not sure, even I suppose my, I don't know, I don't know what the terminology is for that, but I'm sure you know what I mean. Right, so line up the corner of the cardstock with the corners of my squares on my grid paper, and that there, and that there. Okay, be careful to lift it off because it's very easy just to lift that straight off of your actual cardstock. Now with normal washi tape, I mean you could you could do exactly the same with normal washi tape what we're doing here, um, but with normal washi tape you could f fold, just fold these bits over to get them out of the way, um, but I wouldn't recommend it on this because I think it is probably too thick. So what you need to do is to cut the pieces off and I also recommend that you've got something that's plastic that you can just pop your bits on top of each other so that when it comes to throwing them away it's just one piece. The first time I tried this I left all my bits on and cut them off at the end. Trust me that was not a good idea. Um, it was a real battle. Now with the, I'm going to do silver next and what you need to do is as you're lining this up you need to leave a small white gap in between there. I can show you my card. It's easy to see the gap between the gold and the silver but the gap is still there between the white and the silver and the white and gold as well. So you need to leave that tiny tiny gap all the way down. As you're going down make sure that you're not falling short here 
as you're working you might think oh yes that's fine but then as you come down you find that you've not left enough here so be aware of that as you're going there we go that just about fits on there but just about is good enough And just trim the pieces off again. And then it's the white next. I have to bring it down a bit closer. Okay, so you carry on doing this until you get to the bottom. You're not going to have to watch me do all of this because I do have a sheet over there that I've already prepared. But I do want to show you what happens at a corner. So bear with me while I just get that far. Right, now I'm going to use gold for my next stripe. And what I do for this, I gently pull up how much I think I need, which for this one is probably about, oh not quite as much as that, and what I do is I cut the board off, I don't cut the tape, and then I can start working here, okay making sure that I'm not falling short there. So the silver next. The reason I suggest you use the cardboard that's the backing of our designer series paper is because it has a slight sheen to it and the washi tape comes off of there quite nicely. You may find the same would work with our Whisper White cardstock because this is quite smooth. I didn't try it but then I would rather use, try to do a bit of recycling rather than using something that uh, is somewhat better quality. Right this is, oh brilliant, this one's going around the corner in exactly the way I want it to so that I can show you how you get round a corner nicely. Right, okay, this is going to be the last piece I do on this and we move over to the one I've already done. Right, okay, so you can see how I've gone round, it's gone right, right round the corner here. So I'm going to do this with two cuts. Don't try it with one cut by going so far down and then trying to turn a corner. You get a much, much nicer, neater finish if you do it as two separate cuts. Okay. Right, there we go. So I will come back and finish that off later. I might have to undo that bit to straighten that out. Again, it looks as if it's puckered a little bit. 
but I can do that later on. I'm not going to spend time now. So this is the one that I did earlier. So this is what we'll work with. So I don't need those either. So I'm going to adhere this to my gold layer. Not that one upside down, this one upside down. Okay. Move those over, move those over. Just get rid of that little bit of sticky that's at the end. This really is a beautiful product and it's a shame that it's um, a celebration item and not in the main catalogue. Right, next thing to do is to tie a bow around this bit and I take about 23 inches I think. Um, scissors. Oops. Just make sure these are going folding over, or at least going through the loops straight and not twisting. This is really beautiful ribbon. Right, move it down a bit. Just checking where the actual twists and the folds are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a glue dot at the back of the bow so that will hold it in place I think glue dots are probably the only thing that will actually hold on our glimmer paper and also this uh, glitter tape right, let me get the uh, glue dots I think I'm fighting a losing battle here at the moment um, glue dots Um, I know they're here. There we go. I could sit here and fuss with this all day, but I don't have all day, so let's cut that bit and this side. There we go, 
one side bigger than the other but I'm not going to worry. Okay so I'm going to put this onto my card base um, Tombow and when I put my Tombow on this I also put a little bit on the ribbon as well to make sure that holds I will come back later and straighten that out. That's going to wind me up. That's going down and that one's going up. Um, as I say, I'm not going to worry about that now. Now, for the sentiment, um, I used Congratulations to the Bride and Groom. And that comes from the... For the New Two. Yes, for the New Two. And it's this one here I'm using. I'm going to do it with gold embossing powder. So the first thing I need to do is my embossing buddy. Oh, no, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this with a bit of little glue, a um, little bit of snail here. And I'm just putting my finger like this to reduce the amount of sticky there is there. Unfortunately we don't do a removable tape. But I'll show you why I need this not to move about. I use my stamp and magic to get this straight. You may not bother about it. You may be fine. But um, I'm not taking a chance on it myself. Right, so I've gone over it with my dust buddy. I have the stamp here and I have my Versamark. So I'm going to ink that up with Versamark. And then I also have here my acetate for my stamp and jig. Now when I put this down you will see that my stamp and jig tool, this here, is not actually going to be touching the paper, the cardstock underneath, so it will be very easy for that to move. But by putting the temporary glue on it, it will hold it. Oh no, I've done that upside down. Me thinks, have I? Yes, I have. And that's wrong because it's not going to fit on there properly. Okay, rewind. Let's do that bit again. Um, I do have another piece of cardstock over here. So let's try that again. Right, first of all, a little bit of snail. Try and make it less sticky. Pop it into place. Embossing buddy. I'm not sure that that's sticky enough now. Well, fingers crossed. Right, the reason I like to do that is because once I've measured where I need the stamp and jig to go, it's not actually going to be touching the paper and therefore it won't be holding it in place. Okay. So by moving that acetate off of there, it could move. I'm really hoping that that snail has 
done its job properly. Now this time let's make sure we get it up the right way. powder on here which is here Put this away first. Right. There's a couple of areas where there's some embossing powder that I in places I don't want it to be. So I just very gently go over with my brush. There we go, that should be lovely. Right, now my heat tool. A little bit of noise here, it's not too bad. onto my gold foil. And then the final thing is to pop this onto my card and I'm going to use dimensionals because I want the height and then I'm going to use glue dots onto the dimensionals so that uh, they stick well. the uh, glitter. Okay so that's one in each corner and one in the centre. I did think about adding some rhinestones or some pearls but I thought there's quite enough bling with all this glitter paper there. Oops done that one done that. Okay. So the glue dots and paper piercer.
go, that looks straight. Obviously you could put this lower down if you wanted to, wherever you think it looks best. Um, ignore the bow because I'm not happy with that at all. But I am happy with the design of my card. Um, that's the one that I'd made earlier. There was another one here which was before both of those and this one is where I've used the tape in the proper size that it's meant to be and it was while I was making this one that I thought how could I do that and this card was inspired by one that we made at training yesterday which was this one so there you go there's some ideas for you this one just came in various sizes which is where the various size idea came onto this one so I hope you like that I hope you give it a try don't forget this technique you can use on ordinary um, washi tape if you want. So many thanks for watching my video. If you have any questions, please ask me. I'm always very happy to help. If you've enjoyed my video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. If you'd like to purchase any of the products that I featured here, um, if you could click on the link that's in the box below, the 24-7 link, that'll take you straight to my Stamping Up shop. Um, also, I will be putting all the products and the measurements on the screen, but I'm aware that they don't always show through depending on what device you're watching the video on, so I would also put those in the uh, box below the screen as well. So there you go, have fun, um, many thanks for joining me today, until next time, happy crafting, cheerio!